All right, so in this video, we'll be talking about engineering mechanics. No? So, uh, this is uh, part one of our lecture about um, statics of rigid bodies. So first, we will go to the um, to the concept no? of engineering mechanics. No? So it's just right here on our screen, no? engineering mechanics. Okay. Engineering mechanics. Okay. So as per definition, so engineering mechanics is the science, no? The science which considers uh, the effects, the effects of forces on rigid bodies so that is the definition of engineering mechanics no so engineering mechanics is further subdivided into different um, fields no so if we're going to write here a diagram on the field of engineering mechanics no? We just put that one on the center a little bit. No? So engineering mechanics. Okay. So the first um, subfield or the, the first field of engineering mechanics is statics. No? Statics. Okay. Then the other one is dynamics no? so statics is a the branch or the field of engineering mechanics which is um, which is commonly um, associated on um, studying the forces the effects of forces if a body is at rest no so the body is not in motion so that is static no statics okay now dynamics is a part of engineering mechanics no a field of engineering mechanics in which we consider the effects of um, forces the effects of forces when the force when the rigid body or when the body is moving no moving so or in motion then statics is further subdivided into two no we have here the force systems force systems I put forces no? force systems and the other one is applications no applications applications so when we are talking about four systems so during our discussion of four system we'll consider uh, three different types of four systems so first we will have here we have concurrent no concurrent then we have parallel and non concurrent concurrent now for the applications okay for the applications we will have this one for trusses no trusses and we have for centroids and for friction okay friction so those are the applications now for dynamics so dynamics is also divided into two so we have here So we have here the first one is kinematics, no? Kinematics. Then the other one is kinetics. Okay. So kinematics deals with the pure motion of rigid bodies. So it focuses on the motion. So the speed, 
the velocity, the acceleration of a body. So that's why this is further subdivided into translation. Okay. Then rotation and plane motion. Okay. Now kinetics uh, considers uh, the uh, the effect of forces, no? The effect of forces on the motion of a body. So we are now considering what will happen, no? what happen or what will happen if a certain force is exerted on a moving body. So it, it, it is still subdivided to the same tree, no? the same tree. We have also translation, then rotation, and plane motion. But on this field, no, this division of kinetics, we are now considering the effect of the forces applied. No? Okay? So this is the whole um, diagram no? or the whole field of engineering mechanics. So we have statics, which deals on the forces acted on a body when a body is at rest, and dynamics if the body is in motion. Then we have their own subfield, which is for system and applications for statics and dynamics are kinematics and kinetics. So the, the coverage of this um, course, no, or this subject is all about statics. So dynamics is for another um, course or subject, okay? Now we will define some terms that we are going to use on this uh, subject or this course. So first we have rigid body. Okay. So what is a rigid body? So it is defined. Okay. Defined as a definite definite amount. of matter the parts of which are fixed fixed in position okay, let me just change this one fixed in position In position relative to each other. So a rigid body is defined as a as a as a body no? having a definite amount of matter, the parts of which are fixed in position relative to each other. So when you say a definite amount of matter, so it has its own mass or weight, no? And it is fixed. So every part of that body is fixed, meaning it cannot be moved. There is no part or no portion of that body can uh, uh, will be moved in if, will be moved if ever we are uh, considering or acted upon by a external force. So that is what we call as a rigid body. No. So solid bodies are never rigid, no? They deform under action of applied forces. So in many cases, the deformation is negligible compared to the size of the body and the body may be assumed rigid, no? So ideally, in case a force is acted on a body, a deformation will occur, but in some cases, or mo in most cases, we will assume that the deformation is negligible. So that's why we could consider this this body as a rigid body. No, so ideally, so when a forces when a force is acted on a body, even if that body is a whole, no? a complete body, or there is no um, movable parts on that body 
they will occur a deformation but for this um, discussion we will just um, neglect the effect of those forces or the deformation and we consider that body as a rigid body the next we will go to another definition which is force no force we have encountered force during our um, high school physics no our college physics so force is defined no so we will have another definition for force here defined as that which changes or tends to change to change the state of motion of a body no so force is defined at that which changes so meaning it will change or tends to change the state of motion of a body no so that is a force so for example if a body is at rest and it is applied by a force so it will tend to change or it will tend to make the body moving or in motion or if the body is moving it, if it is applied by a force it will tend to stop the motion of a body so that is a force now there is a, there, there are characteristics of a force no characteristics okay characteristics characteristics so we have three so first we have um it is characterized by its magnitude okay magnitude so meaning the value of the force so how much force is applied either it is 30 newton 40 50 no then the next one we have its location no so position position of its line of action so what does it mean if the force the position of the force is how many degrees you no know, with respect to the horizontal or with respect to the vertical or with respect to the horizontal plane of the rigid body you no know? so that is the position of its line of action then the last one is the direction you no know? direction in which uh, in which the force acts the force acts along its line of action no so the direction so for example if it is um 30 degrees no 30 degrees with respect to the horizontal so is is it uh, going to the plane no the horizontal plane or moving away so sometimes we will have that one is uh, as uh, for example if we are going to plot our forces on a uh, on a pla on a certain um, rectangular coordinate so either it is um, on the the location is or the direction is um on the first second or third or fourth quadrant or it is on the northeast uh southwest no so that that is what we mean as the direction in which the force acts along its line because for example if a certain body is moving then we are applying no applying no? applying a force which is 30 degrees relative to the plane of the body no? the the plane of the body or the plane in which the body is moving then the force is um, um, the direction of the force is in opposite of the measure of the motion of the rigid body or of the body then if by by um, simple analysis we could uh, we could say or suggest that the force will have an effect 
on the body by by means of slowing down the body or stopping it completely depending on the magnitude of the body so that is how we are going to characterize or um, th those are the characteristics of a force so it is very important to have these three characteristics because it will truly define no, the effects of force on a rigid body okay so in our study of um, engineering mechanics so we are only considering the we are only considering the external forces no okay change the color of the screen so we're only considering the external no? external forces or the effects uh oh, that one you write this one the external effects of the force no on the body so that is the 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 scope of our definition of force force in this course no the external effects of the force on the body so meaning we are not considering what is happening inside no inside the body so that if we are going to have considered the internal forces in which it could cause um, deformation no? or creepage or in in some cases it will uh, tend to break no break the the body so these are the internal no? internal effects internal effects of forces no? or of the force on the body so for engineering mechanics we are only considering the external forces so whether it stop or it um, accelerates the body or whether it makes the uh, body for example we added another um, we put another um, block or another body on top another body it how how does it affect the the weight no the weight of the another body so we are only considering the external forces for the internal forces we we, we will go to the field no that is for the other field of uh, mechanics also or no the other field of um of the study no of or the, the study of materials which is known as the strength of materials or the fundamentals of deformable bodies so on the, on that course uh we we are now considering no or it will be considered the 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 the, the deflection and the deformation of a rigid body now for our course in the statics so we are considering external forces only and the body is considered to be at rest no okay then we have also the principle so this is another definition maybe i will have this one in green no the principle of trans Missibility, no? trans, trans me C. So this is double S, B L T. Okay. So it is a principle, no? That the, the transmiss the transmissib the principle. No, sorry for that. I got some stutter. No. So the the principle of transmissibility of a force states, no? States that. external effect external effect of a force on a body is the same is the same for all for all for all points, no? For all points. This is that one. For all points. Points along 
for all points of application okay. for all points of of application along its uh, its line of action no so so it is independent no independent independent of the point no so it is not um, affected by the point of application so dependent of the point of application okay so the principle of transmissibility of a force states that the external effect of a force on a body is the same for all points of application along its line of action so it is independent of the point of application no so that is the um, the principle of trans transmissibility then the internal effect of force also however no so for um for reference to the external force so is definitely dependent so it is dependent on the point of application because if we are considering the internal the internal force so if there is an external force acted on the body then internally there will be also a different effect on the internal no? on the internal forces but if we are only considering the external forces so the external effect of the force on a body is the same for all points along its application independent of the point of application okay so to a to illustrate this principle example just clear our screen we have here a rigid body no okay just have this one a little bit lower no okay there is something wrong with my screen no or my pen we should have another color okay so we have this one here so we have a rectangular rigid body now if we are going to apply a force no in this line of action no so, so this is how we are going to have a a representation of a force so this will be a force so the force is represented by an arrow with the arrowhead is where the point of application is no okay they put too much on this one no okay so just write that one okay force no? so using the principle of transmissibility the effect no the external effect of those of this force is the same along when it's is the same for all points no along its line of application so to illustrate that if this is the line of application no so if this is 30 newton so if we are going to transmit no, no? or to tran or to um to transmit or to transfer the force here so this force will be transferred here along is still along its its line of application so this is this force also is equal to 30 newton so whatever no whatever is the force applied I'll, if we are going to consider its application along its um, point of application all along its point of application or the line no? line of action so this is the line of action here so all of the points which are which are being transverse no? transverse by the line of action the value of that force is always the same or equal so for example if we have acting on it the weight of the body no 
So this one, the weight of the body, no? vertical. So this is, for example, the force for this one, so F2, 20 Newton. So the line of action is this one, no? this is the line of action. Uh, this is also the line of action here. So the line of action is the line in which the force is being acted upon, no? or in which the force is acting on it. Because we're considering our a force as a straight, no? straight line. No? The line that will exclude the line of action, so straight. So if we are also to transfer our weight here, so this force, okay, so this is still equal to 20 Newton. So that is the law of transmissibility or the principle of trans transmissibility. So regardless if our example is the forces are horizontal and vertical, even if it is uh, on a certain angle with respect to the vertical axis or the horizontal axis, as long as it is within the line of action, all points of those are will have the same value of forces or external forces. So that is the principle of transmissibility. No? Okay. Next, we will go to the last one. No? The, maybe this is the last discussions uh, discussion for the introduction to statics. We have the force systems. No, the force system. Okay, so a force system is an arrangement, no? An arrangement, arrangement, or any arrangement where two or more forces. Forces act on a body or or on a group no a group of related bodies okay. okay so force system is an arrangement of an arrangement where two or more forces act on a body or a group of related bodies. So that is the definition of force system. No? So, for example, we have a certain body here, a certain rigid body here. Then there is a force acting on this one. So F1, there's another force which is um, we call this one, for example, this is 30 degrees with respect to horizontal, F2. Then this one also is another body here, F3. No? Then we have uh, also a vertical force here in the bottom, which is F4. Okay, so this, the F1, F2, F3, and F4 are on, considered to be forces on a force system. No? So, that is an example of force system. So, the forces acting on a body. So, it is two or more. Because if it is only one, it, then that will be called as force. A system must be consist of two or more elements. So, that's why we have force system, two or more forces acting on the same body or related. When we say related, those bodies are considered to be as one. In which, the if there is... A certain effect on one of the body then the other one also will um, will have the same effect or will be affected um, relatively the same no? so that is a force system then we have also different types of force systems so first we have the coplanar no? coplanar 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 force system so this uh, uh, force system is considered to be coplanar when 
when the lines of action of the forces forces are on the same plane so a force system is considered to be coplanar if the line of action of the forces are on the same plane so the lines of action of the forces are on the same plane so if to illustrate this one so it is uh, similar to okay so we have a rigid body here so this will be f1 this will be f2 and this will be for example it is a little bit inclined here this will be f3 now f1 f2 and f3 are on the same plane the lines of action so their, their lines of action are on the same plane so this therefore f1 f2 and f3 are coplanar force system no then the opposite of this one is we have the non-complainer. So we just write that one here. Non-complainer system. So the forces or the lines of action, the lines of action of the forces are not on the same plane so we are going to illustrate that one so this will usually occur if we are now considering uh, forces on three-dimensional plane or three-dimensional space no so for example we have a cube here so we have a cube no So we have this arrow drawing of a cube, no? So if a force is acting on this face of the cube, F1, then another at the bottom face, F2, another on this face, F3, then also on this edge, F4. So we could say that um, three of these forces are two of these forces no, are non-complainer so the F4 and F1 are complainer because they are acting on the same face so if it is a cube so we will consider each face as a plane no, as a plane so F4 and F1 are complainer but F3, F2 and the group F4 and F1 are not complainer so they are not acting on the same face or on the same plane of our um, cube so if you, if if you are go if you now go to the three dimensional force systems no that is the non complainer so there is also another way of analyzing this one so that's why during your physics uh, oh, physics guys physics you you are um, taught how to um, analyze um, vectors no vectors and how to get the components of vectors no? so that is the uh, one of the uh, uh, this is one of the application of that topic no so the coplanar system is obviously simpler no because we only we are only considering one plane so the non coplanar the line of action does not occur on the same plane so that's why it's much um, harder to analyze sometimes we will uh, usually we will analyze that one by plane no so by plane so the coordinate system will be x y and z so we will consider a force on the x y plane the y z plane and the x z plane no so we just um, that is how we are going to um, we are going to analyze non coplanar system so meaning the coplanar system is much easier because we are only considering one plane for example x y no 
x, y, and then we could get the component forces and we could um, do different types of analysis considering only on the um, on the single plane. But in practicality, so we are living in a um, uh, three-dimensional plane in which we have the length, the width, and the height of any body. So uh, let me correct the term that not three-dimensional plane but three-dimensional space. No, So in which we have the height, length, and the width of a body. So the usual way no, or the usual is that we will consider forces as non-complainer. No? So if if you're only considering one plane, then uh, one plane of a certain body, a three-dimensional body, then um, it is uh, it is not um, it is not that exact representation of the effects of those force on on the whole three-dimensional body. So that's why this is also part of the subject on uh, tackling on how to analyze non-coplanar force system. Okay. Next, we will have four. Um, there are also what we call as concurrent and parallel force system and non-concurrent. So first, we will have definition for concurrent. No? Concurrent force system. Okay. So concurrent force system is when the lines of force of the lines of force the line of action okay the line okay, what happens color in the line of action of action passes through no or pass through a common point no? passes through a common point so for example we have here our rigid body no? just draw a rigid body here so a force acting on this one F another force acting on this one which is also F this is F2 and F1 then another forces acting which is F3 so if we are going to extend no? extend our lines of forces no? our lines of action okay. okay so there will be a common point in which these forces will occur no? so for example we have F2 and F1 so they are concurrent forces F2 and F3 are also concurrent forces because they pass through the same point no? if those lines of action does not pass through a through a common point no through a common point don't then this type of forces are called the first one will be parallel no parallel forces no? so for example we have a rigid body now this is F1 and this is F2 so they are they does not uh, they have their lines of actions are parallel no parallel so it means that they did not meet on or their lines of action does not pass through a common point common point but they are parallel in nature so meaning they are um equally no they are equal on their distance no so they are um considered as parallel forces if a force or forces is not parallel and also non-concurrent meaning so not concurrent so meaning if you have a force here then you have this force F1 then maybe uh, this one here so 
it's hard to it's hard to illustrate the and uh, this type of force so meaning if you're going to extend this line of force then we have another force in which it will never suppose for example a little bit uh, angled no? so this one here uh, the, we just uh, intersect no? so maybe a little bit uh, inclined here no okay so this force is just um, there this one here okay so maybe a little bit here no? okay so they are not parallel and also they will not intersect no on a certain point no So these types of forces, so F1 and F2, is called non-coplanar forces. No? So if you are going to um, extend that one, you will also extend here. As long as they doesn't meet and they are not parallel, then they are non-coplanar forces. No? Okay. So those are the types of forces that we will be encountering on this um, course and we have also defined what is dynamic what is engineering mechanics the statics and dynamics then the definition of rigid body and the force and lastly we define the different force system and try to illustrate them to have a better understanding on how to analyze those forces especially when we go now to the in-depth no, of our study in statics of rigid bodies okay so i hope you understand something in this video so if you have any question you could comment down below in our comment section and thank you for watching and as always enjoy learning <coughs>